Got your Bible? I want you to turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 26. We're in a series. It's called Call to Duty. It's a series in regards to spiritual warfare. How many know that we're in a spiritual battle? Paul says that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness and principalities in high places. If we understand spiritual warfare, we will never really truly be mad at people because we will know that behind the, the, the one that's, that's antagonizing you and trying to hinder you is not flesh and blood or people, but it's a enemy that hates you. As a believer, there is a enemy that wants to see you killed, see you stolen from, and destroyed. But the good news is that Jesus has built up a hedge, a standard, that no weapon formed against us will prosper if we walk according to his word. And the people said amen. amen. So today I want to talk to you about spiritual warfare, but particularly about prayer. Prayer, but in regards to watching and pray. Now I hope today that you won't be offended. I'm going to be very, very all up in your grill a little bit. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to direct you. And I'm going to hopefully get you to think a little bit different about yourself and about your purpose and about how you can be successful and win in God. I believe everything that we receive from him is because we have met him and we're in his presence, and when you're in his presence, you can ask anything and it will be given unto you. Prayer is the lifeline of the believer. It's the oxygen tank that keeps us moving in the spirit realm and even what we receive in the natural. So I want you to go with me to the book of Matthew. I've already told you, Matthew 26. Let me get there. And this is at the end of Jesus' ministry. Let me just give you a little backdrop. It's the end of Jesus' ministry, and Jesus is now in the garden praying right before he goes to the cross. Could I just suggest to you today that we are living in the end time? We are living in a season where I believe that Jesus could come back at any given moment. Yep. The Bible says that no man knows the day or the hour, but it doesn't say that we will never know the season. How many know today that God has promised that Jesus will return and he will take his people with him and they will escape a whole lot of stuff that other people will have to go through? How many know that there are benefits to serving the Lord? So this is the end of the life of the ministry of Jesus on the earth. I think it parallels to where we are today. Touch your ears and say, Holy Spirit, help me to understand today. Come on, touch your ears. Say, Holy Spirit, help me. All right, verse 36, all right? So then Jesus came with them, the disciples, and to a place that was called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. So he goes on, he says, and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then Jesus said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here, look at this now, and watch with me. Watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and he prayed again, saying, oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Verse 40. Then Jesus came to the disciples, and what were they doing? They were on the couch, knocked out. He found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, what? And when Jesus tells you what, what the... What? Could you not watch 
He says it again now. He told him to watch, but he says it again. Could you not watch with me one hour? Look what he says here in verse 41. Watch and pray. Look at your neighbor and say, watch and pray. That was weak, man. Don't look at me. I told you, your neighbor. Tell him, watch and pray, neighbor. Or watch and pray, wife, husband. We get husband and wives to pray together, they'll stay together. But let me just, just let me, let me, don't let me meddle. Let me just, let me get on with this thing. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit, that's your spirit. How many of you have a spirit? Your spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So now this is the end of Jesus' ministry. Jesus is right before the hour that he was to come to give his life so that you and I could have eternal life. We believe that Jesus died for your sins, but he didn't die for your sins. Now that, was, that happened, but he did not go to die for your sins. He was obedient to the Father. And because he was obedient to the Father, you have forgiveness for sin. Somebody says, he did it for me. Well, if he did it for you, then some of us aren't very thankful. He did it to the Father. He obeyed the Father, and as a result of that, you get what I'm saying? We are the beneficiary of his obedience. So now he is, he's, he's struggling at the end of his ministry, and he has 12 cats that have been following him for three and a half years. They get to the end. You think by now, that they would know what Jesus is all about. But they get to this moment of trial, this moment of test, and there they find themselves when Jesus needed them most. They had fallen asleep. Jesus told his disciples three times, watch and pray. Watch with me. Now, what does it mean to watch? Because this is where I believe the church, and I believe city church is at prophetically. God has called us to be a church that prays. Nothing that's ever happened in my life has come to me outside of the realm of prayer. Prayer in itself is where I have found to find what I call my secret place with the Most High God. Now, prophetically, the church in America universally. We talk about why we don't have the authority and the power that we need to. And let me suggest to you today, it's simply because we have a prayerless church. But not just a prayerless church, we have a church that is not watching and praying as Jesus commanded us to. We can take what's in the Word it wasn't spoken directly to us, but it is spoken to us because we have the privilege of reading it today. In the end time, and we're there, Jesus is saying to the church again today, wake up, become alert, look around, because it's your responsibility to not only pray, but to watch. And the people said amen. amen. Now what does it mean to watch? Well, what's the opposite of watching? Sleeping. Sleeping is a attitude of the opposite of watching. To watch means to be alert. When you're watching, someone says, I'm watching, it's, you know, I'm watching and praying, they're like, no, 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 that's not, that's, you're not, you know, one eye closed, one eye looking around. See, might somebody take your money out of your, your pocketbook. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about inwardly an attitude that we are engaged and alert to what he's saying, to what he's declaring, and to what he wants for our hearts, for our lives. Now, to sleep is what Jesus found. He found the disciples sleeping. Now, what does that mean? To sleep means that what happens is that you become insensitive to what is going on around you. Or could we say you would become desensitized to the feelings of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
This is what the Spirit is saying to me about the church by and large, that the church may be praying, but they're not watching. And as a result of not watching, they have become insensitive, and they pray, and they live in a state of broken fellowship. Let me tell you something. It's very difficult to pray if the presence of the Lord is not there. Someone always asks me, Pastor, you say let's pray for hours in all night prayer. How do you do it? You can't do it in your own strength. But if your spirit is filled with the spirit in his presence, you can retain your attention and remain in his presence to hear what the spirit. I wish I had a few friends here on the first Sunday of August. Jesus says to the disciples, and he's saying to us, we need to watch and we need to pray. What I've learned is that it's very difficult for people to remain focused in attention to God in prayer simply because they have come into a state where they have removed themselves from sensitivity to what the Lord is speaking. People with broken fellowship have a short attention span in the presence of God. God tells us, he tells us to watch, to be alert, to be in a state of readiness. Can I suggest to you that the church has become anemic because there is no true lifeline of prayer and watching. Your prayer is the place of his presence. And it's a place where he makes known his will. So we could say that watching is related to prayer. So when you are watching, you will know exactly what God is doing or what the enemy's doing. But therefore, when you do not pray and you do not watch, you are not prepared to make the changes or to maneuver or understand his voice or understand the trend because we have become insensitive and pray in a state of broken fellowship. Listen to me. I'm going to make a bold statement. It's almost tweetable. The success of the enemy is tied to the issue of the church not watching. The enemy has a playground with a believer who does drive-by prayer times. God has called City Church. I can't answer for everybody else, but I certainly can see the landscape of what's going on within the church. And the success of the enemy in the church's life is tied to what I'm talking about right now, not praying, and not watching, because when you're not watching, you slowly, little by little by little, lose your sensitivity to the things of God. The closer you are to the presence of God, the longer that you can stay in the presence of the Lord. So what is the purpose for us to watch It's for us to watch until the end. We can't just stand up and watch one one day. We've got to become a people where it is a lifestyle that we are in prayer and we're watching. Look what Jesus says here in Luke 21, verse 36. Watch therefore and pray that you may be counted to escape. How many want to escape some difficult times? So if you want to escape some difficulties, you're going to have to learn to watch. I can't do the watching for you. As a pastor, that's my responsibility, is that I watch so that the enemy doesn't completely destroy you. But to get you to move into the the realm where you need to be, you're going to have to somehow, somewhere, sometime along the line, learn that it is my responsibility and my burden to find a place where I learn to watch and pray. 
Come on, somebody. Look what he says, Luke 21, verse 30. He says, watch therefore and pray that you may be counted to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. How many want to stand before, the, before God and how many want to escape some difficult times? You need to get on the watch tower. To not be watching is to be sleeping and to sleep is to become insensitive. To sleep is to become an individual who lives in broken fellowship with God. I know it sounds difficult, but I really, really, really want to bring us back to the state that God has desired. When you watch, you will be effective. You will know how to war. You will understand the current truths. You will understand the strategies that God can give. You will know how to fight that disease when it comes against you. You will know what's happening to your business when the devil comes in one way. You will know how to cast him out seven ways. What I'm saying to the church today is that we have to rise up. We have to get back in our position. Don't slumber. Don't sleep like the disciples. When Jesus was counting on the disciples, they were asleep. Are you sleeping today? I'm not asking you to raise your hand, but I'm asking you, are you so sensitive to what the Spirit of God is saying that when he speaks, you almost know exactly what to do before he even says it? You will be effective. Think about the 10 virgins in Matthew chapter 25. I've, I've, I've written uh, plays about the virgins, and I've preached this sermon so many times. Will you be ready? Five wise and five foolish. Isn't it amazing that the Bible calls them all virgins? It doesn't call five whore and five virgins. It says they were all virgins, meaning they were all church folk. They were all people who knew the Lord. But there was, diff there was a difference in five than the other five. One set of five had lamps that were filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit, the oil. There's going to come a time where God is going to send his Lord to intervene in your situation. And he's only going to be able to intervene and bring some truths into your life if your spirit, your lamp, is filled with the oil and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Only those who have their lamps lit with the oil of God are going to be able to go in when he calls them. What does that mean? That means you have to fight. See, they were taking it easy. They didn't know when their time was gonna come. What, what, what really scares me is they all had lamps. They all had the same opportunity. But when the time came, when God was to speak to them, when he was to maneuver them into a new realm, only the five that had the spirit in their spirit was filled, were able to go in to receive the promise that God had destined for them. Are you sensitive today or have you become insensitive and you become that way because you stop watching while you pray? You have to watch, watch to be on guard. Doesn't the Bible says watch? because the enemy is lurking around, seeking whom he may devour. It's that moment that you stop watching, when you start to take it easy. Oh, I don't have to pray like I used to. I don't have to do all those spiritual disciplines like I used to. The disciples thought that, and they found themselves in a place of temptation that they could not get out of simply because they were sleeping. God will deliver a people out of every situation if they're watching while they're praying. Come on, somebody. Matthew 25, 13 says this, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So we don't know. 
Is Jesus coming back? No doubt about it. But he's not coming back for people who aren't watching. He's not coming back to deliver a people who are just taking it easy and they're not on their game. Matthew 24 verse 42 says this, watch therefore for you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also need to be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. So what does that mean? If you're not watching, it means you're not praying. And if you're not watching and you're not praying, you're not prepared. The church without the anointing is falling into a place of sleep and slumber. So is it very important? that we pray. Wave at me. Let me see your hand. This is an altar call. Let me see you. Is it very important that we watch? Then why is it that when we have prayer meeting, less people attend than when we have a morning service? You say, well, it's on a Friday. Well, if I was to have a fish fry, if I was to have a buffet, Of all you can eat, seafood, shrimp, crawfish, you and cousins that you haven't heard from will be in the house of God. Yet, you ask me, Pastor, what's the key to my life? I'm telling you, watching and praying. 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 praying. God said to me, I want you to go back to all night prayer meetings. You think I like to pray all night? You think I just love laying there on the front row so all of y'all can watch me and see what I do? You think I just love that? No, I don't, but I learned if I don't watch and I don't pray, I won't be able to stay. I won't be able to remain. I won't be able to move where God wants me to. But here's the sad thing. Here's the sad thing. When we are disengaged from prayer or the prayer life of a church, we become easy fruit for the enemy to snatch us. Sunday has more people than prayer meetings, but the early church prayed when they came together because they knew that if they prayed, God would move. They knew that if they prayed, sickness could no longer stay in their presence. They knew that if they prayed, and they prayed to a point, and sometimes, look at the book of Acts, that they would pray so intensely that the room would actually shake. They weren't like some of these folks that get in, our father, I lay myself down to sleep, prima lord, no, 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 no. You need to hear Olivia pray. My five-year-old, when she prays, she could be knocked out. Heavenly Father, I ask you today, I pray for all the pastors, all the elders, all the deacons, that you would use them, oh God, and that you would bring this church to a place. I mean, it's like, I want to get her in the front and let her lead the people of God, because sometimes she's got a little more energy than the people of God. Father God, bless all the elders. So elders, if y'all are getting something around 930, it's coming from Olivia. Now, you know, Liam has those short prayers. Father, bless them. I'm going to sleep. But Olivia, she's detailed, and it's, her language changes, the way she says things, her pronunciation, and Father, bless the elders and the pastors. It really is funny. But my point is, is that the lifeline of our relationship is with the Father through prayer. And yet, we don't understand the importance of cultivating our spirit. People begin to backslide. Ever heard that term, backslide? Yep. Now, I don't, I don't want you to raise your hand and say you backslide. I'm just saying, have you ever heard of the term to backslide? It means to kind of go back where, from where you once were in God. Usually people start backsliding 
first in their prayer life before you see it in their church life. 1 Corinthians 11 verse, let me show you what Paul says, what Paul says about this sleeping thing. He says, for this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many are sleeping. Think about that. He said, many, for this reason, many are weak, they are sick because they are sleeping. Could it be the enemy comes in to our camp when we're not on the watch? That's right. Backsliders begin to spend less time in prayer. But yet if you ask them, how are you and God? They say, oh, I got a great prayer life. Let me just tell you something right now. If you can't pray with me, you ain't praying on your own. I, 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 look, you say, well, yeah, you just don't know me. No, I know you. Listen, if you can't pray when this band's playing, and, and we got Doc up here playing, and we got, we got the guitar going, if you can't praise then, you ain't praising when the devil comes in and gives you some bills that you weren't expecting. Right here is where you practice that praise. You get that praise on and say, well, I got some bad news. Praise him anyway. Praise him, worship him, pray, watch right here. Somebody stand on your feet right now, and I want you to praise him for about two minutes. I don't care if you got some bad news. I don't care if you got some hard times. Just praise him. Just praise. Just worship. Just pray. Anyway, somebody, go ahead and do it. Do it in Jesus' name. Woo, come on, sit down. Let me just finish up. Let me finish up. Let me finish up. Come on. You need to learn to build your spirit man up. Learn to build your spirit man up. You build your spirit through prayer and fasting. Now, let me just say something about prayer. Let me tell you something about prayer. The safe place for prayer is when you are in that secret place. That secret place is where you, for your own, for just a few minutes, you find a relief from the pains and the stress of this life. Now listen to me, listen to me. When a child is born into this world, they come from another world, right? Now, what's that other world? That other world is the mama's womb. I've been there four times, watched it four times happen. You talk about, you talk about some tribulation. Major tribulation when right before that baby is born, all right? They don't know what's going on, but they're inside that little, that little cocoon, and they're nourished and taken care of. But on the outside, you're telling your wife, breathe. You're telling your wife, just push a little harder, and then they look over you like the exorcist and tell you, get away from me. You did this to me. This world is filled with all kinds of troubles and problems. The child is in another world, you see, and that child now has to travel through the birthing canal and on their way from the womb to be born into this world of trouble, Scientists tell us it's been proven that a child loses all kinds of brain matter as it comes through the canal because what happens is that they go from a place of tranquility, a place of harmony, a place of safety, and they travel through the birthing canal, and when they come out, they come out smiling. They come out laughing. No, they come out doing what? Screaming. Because what they're doing is like, I was in that place where there was no pain. It was like a Disney World, 24 hours, seven days a week with fast passes. But now that I had to come through that canal and come out here, I've come from a world where there's peace, where there's joy, where everything is supplied and they never have to ask for it. But when they travel to that, they realize they've come into a world where there's nothing but trouble, stress, and problems. And so a child comes out of that womb yelling and screaming, ah, 
I can't believe you brought me in this world. They probably can't articulate because they don't have a language yet, but they know they've come somewhere where it ain't like it used to be. However, the only time a child has a chance to feel that same warmth, that same harmony, that same peace is when they latch and nurture from their mother's breast. For that moment, they have a reprieve from this world's trouble, and that's what prayer's like. We have come into this world where there's nothing but trouble, there's nothing but problems, there's nothing but tragedy, but when we latch on and nurture ourselves in prayer from communion with God, we have for a moment somebody, we have a moment somebody on the drum, somebody on the, ga- the guitar, somebody on the piano moving fast. You need to understand for a moment we have a reprieve. We have a, we have a moment away from the troubles of this world. Stand with me today. Come on. Stand with me today. And I want you to begin to pray. Pray out in the Holy Spirit. Begin to thank God today that he's called you. He's called you to pray. He's called you to watch. He's called you. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody, press in. Hey, press thanks in. for watching the City Church YouTube channel. If you've enjoyed this message, take a moment and click the subscribe button. That way you won't miss another message. If you've been blessed in any way by this ministry, and you want to partner with us in taking the gospel of Jesus Christ around the globe, you can click the link in the description below to give now. Again, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.